Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to give my review of the Xiaomi Redmi Note 4X phone. So this is a phone that was being recommended, and I'm also going to recommend it on the same basis, of being a budget phone that has good specs, basically a really good value phone. Um, it's hard to find another device which gives you the same power at the price point. So I was able to pick it up for $128, it was using a coupon code. Um, Original price, I, th I think most places are charging around 140 150 at the moment, but yeah, maybe you can find a little cheaper like I did. One of the things I was looking at before I picked up the device was the benchmark score, and I was comparing it against some other phones. So the Xiaomi Note 4X scores at, well, this is my actual result, scoring at 61,517, which is almost exactly what I saw people getting online. Um, I forget what the name of that site is, but there's a list of anti-G benchmark scores. I'll, I'll actually dig that up and give you guys the links in the description before I uh, publish this video. Um, but anyway, a comparable phone would be the Samsung Galaxy A7 2017, which I was also looking at. But that phone costs a few hundred dollars more, um, something more like $350, $400. It scores 63000 on the anti -G benchmark, so those two devices paying more than double to get just a little bit more performance seems like a bad value buy um and just kind of gives you an idea of where this phone is. the specs are very good it has three gigabytes of ram eight core processor 4100 milliamp hour battery life uh or battery that doesn't specify the life but it does have a very long battery life um easy to be in standby mode i, I don't even know how many days because i've never had it go dead on me on standby probably days at least on standby and uh, actively using it you can pretty much go all day with it um so i've had no problems there and a long battery life is actually really good so some of the things you might be concerned about is that xiaomi as you would think from the name is actually a chinese brand so uh the apps that they provide with you are not necessarily google play out of the box though if you look at the bottom left on the screen here you can see I've gone ahead and installed Google Play. Not really an issue. You just have to Google how to install the APK on a Xiaomi Redmi Note 4X. Um, and the the Mi apps are fine overall. Um, really just kind of basic apps. Uh, I, I don't know exactly why they decided to kind of homebrew everything. Maybe it has to do with legal issues. Uh, but basically those apps are all fine. The problem is that, you know, a lot of it's in Chinese. So I would recommend if you speak English um, and you, English is your first primary language, probably want to go ahead and install the Google Play Store. But switching the apps over, it's not really an issue. You just have to replace the apps you don't like with the apps you do like. And pretty much even if I did have a default Western brand Android phone, I would do exactly the same thing anyway uh, to make sure that I get the apps that I actually like. Um, for instance, CM browser at the bottom, decided to go with that, had to replace the browser, it, once you do it, it's fine, not a big deal. Um, so in terms of actual performance, I did edit a couple videos on some other channels, and maybe even one on this one, I, I think maybe my first impressions I added it here, uh, using some of these apps, so like Adobe Clip, PowerDirector, Lexus Audio Editor, and I had no issues running those at all, um, they ran very fine. Um, of course, the exporting not going to be as fast as a desktop or laptop computer. The fact that we can even edit videos on phones nowadays is pretty cool, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, no issues there. It takes a little while to render, but that's to be expected. If you're exporting a 5 or 10 minute video, expect probably 10 minutes export. Um, in terms of games, um, I did buy it partially because I wanted to play Hearthstone on my phone a bit more. Um, Hearthstone does run uh, reasonably well. It's not going to be flawless. There are going to be a few seconds slowdown in the menus, um, but you can get decent performance in Hearthstone if you're willing to sit through that. Um, otherwise, yeah, you'll probably get better results on your desktop. Might be a little less frustrating to play on your desktop. Um, but every other game you see here, which I went ahead and played around a bit and uh, runs pretty much completely flawlessly. Um, of course, that's going to be partially because these games were, for the most part, originally designed for Android, maybe with the exception of the Outer Scrolls Legends over there. Um, actually, Shadowverse was on the PC too, originally first, I think. But um, anyway, in terms of gaming performance, 
if it's a phone game, it's probably going to run. The only thing I could imagine you getting real slowdown is if there's like a, some kind of 3D open world game, something the equivalent of like World of Warcraft that might have some issues on a phone. But I don't even recall seeing many games like that on Android devices to begin with. So pretty much if you're just playing casual games, it's going to be perfectly fine for that. You won't have any issues whatsoever. Um, all the other apps run just fine, very smooth transitions between different web pages, it loads fast, um, nothing really much to complain about there. The only uh, downside I would say, aside from having to kind of work through the Chinese apps and um, kind of reset everything back to whatever English apps you want to use, by the way, when you set up the phone, you can put it in English mode, so you don't have to worry about chi typing Chinese characters or anything. But um, aside from dealing with those apps and having to replace them and get your phone set up, uh, the main screen right here that you see here, um, there's no landscape mode for it. I think that it's just forced as portrait mode, which is a little unfortunate because I actually usually like to use landscape. I'm probably in the minority of people there. But at least out of the box, that's something you'll have to deal with if that's something you don't like. But aside from those two very minor things, I have pretty much nothing but good things to say about the phone. Um, once again, I got it for like $128 on a coupon. Uh, most places have it listed at about $140, $150. Um, I'll put a link to it in the description if you're interested. Uh, I'll just link to Amazon since that's a common place people like to buy. So for the specs you're getting, um, the value is very high up there. I did compare several phones before because uh, I was trying to find the best value phone. And I really think that the Xiaomi Redmi Note 4X, if not the best in that price range of about $130 to $150 right now, if it's not the best, it's definitely really close up there, and it was a good buy overall. Uh, one last thing I can mention is if you're into using uh, thumbprint biometric scanning, it does have a thumbprint scanner on the back, which can be a really quick way to unlock your device. Um, whether you want to do that based on some security concerns, like a fingerprint is unique and can't be changed like a password can, um, so it may not be what you want to use. But the option is there if you do want it and you want the convenience of it. So worth mentioning. Um, so anyway, I've been Chris. Thanks for watching. Once again, link in the description if you're interested in the phone. And I will see you guys in my future video content.